guys, welcome to week seven of my ultramarathon training. Back out on the Spire Ultra route this morning for a long run. Decided to start from the bottom of Dennis's Lane, which you may recall from last week. So I don't have to deal with that this time around. Uh, managed to find somewhere to park the car in Holy Moor's Hyde here. So I'm heading off into the woods and fields uh, to get this 17k done. After this, I'll fill you in on how the week's training has gone. Another topic I want to cover today is what it feels like to be training for your first ultra marathon in your 40s. Now I'm 47 at the moment, and in three months' time, uh, when the race starts, it'll be two days after my 48th birthday. So. I'll definitely be well into my 40s by the time the race starts. So last week I was out on my 16k long run for the Saturday of week 6. Uh, this is the hills and strength section of the plan. So I got that 16k done and uh, yeah a little bit tired after that one and the next day I had the 11 kilometers to do. Uh, did that uh, and somewhere between easy and steady pace as instructed legs starting to feel pretty tired after that so then week seven started on the monday we we're immediately into a 8k easy run with strength training afterwards and that 8k was anything but easy <laughs> you know my legs were heavy tired and sore uh, i picked a nice flat route but even so it was a real drain and uh, I was feeling, yeah, pretty broken at that point. <laughs> Luckily, Tuesday was a rest day. Definitely needed that. I'm not sure if the plan's just perfectly designed so that these things come at the right time. But if so, kudos to Christy Mayo. already know that when I got properly into this training plan I was coming off the back of an injury where I'd had runner's knee and not really been running properly for a couple of months so with that in mind my main focus during the training while sticking to the plan as closely as possible which I've been doing well up to now I'm almost hyper aware of the state of recovery my body at any point, keep an eye out for injuries, trying to keep on top of any niggles, uh, making sure I sleep well and going back to my very first video of the series where I did week one back in early November I was talking about how I'd managed to lose weight you can see in that video that I am Probably the skinniest I've been for years. Bit of a thin face. And I managed to get rid of the belly fat, but I have a feeling that that process of losing weight, kind of underfeeding if you like, and then training whilst in that state may have contributed to me getting injured because I wasn't fueling my body correctly or enough to allow for proper recovery which I think is important for anyone who's trying to get better at sports or stronger you need to feed your body it can't recover and grow and improve if you are starving it so my new approach to nutrition is to eat a lot more than I was uh, I've gained back a few of the pounds that I lost before and I seem to have found a nice new level where I can maintain um, whilst eating enough so that seems to be helping I'm feeling much better for it feeling stronger feeling good in the gym, good on the runs and yeah, I think eating well is serving me well So on Tuesday I rested, obviously 
did some foam rolling to keep the legs feeling good make sure there were no knots in the, the usual place where my knee gets upset and just generally get them uh, ready for action the next day knowing that the hardest hill session of the plan was coming up on the Wednesday so I am 47 now and I only started running during the lockdown when the gyms got closed in uh, April 2020 I started that's when I began the couch to 5k and I've been running since then it's now February 2023 so I'm coming up to three years as a runner not a massive amount of experience I've uh, only run in two races before now both of them 10k's fairly local to me and I feel like I do have to just make sure I don't overload myself and that recovery is a priority obviously you learn to get better at these things with experience but as a slightly older runner I just feel like I need to be a little bit more aware of them uh, so I don't break myself so having said all that I know there are a lot of runners and ultra runners older than me so it's not like I feel like I'm part of the the oldie crowd when it comes to ultra running I'm just aware that I'm no spring chicken and that looking after yourself is the only way to keep doing what you love doing so that's got to be high on the priority list but thankfully up to now I've managed to stick with the plan and just help myself recover in between sessions and runs so I can keep doing it and here we are just approaching the road crossing at Adam's Happy Hens so on to Wednesday and that was the big hill session day uh, the hardest one of the plan uh, on the peak week of this hills and strength section so after a 15 minute warm-up I got to the bottom of the big hill and I had to run up for eight minutes jog down for eight minutes <laughs> now, that's a long stretch of uphill running I'm amazed I didn't run out of hill actually well it seemed to be just enough and then after that there was reps of six five four and two minutes and then a 15 minute cool down but my legs were pretty destroyed from that so I definitely knew about it the next day so after that hill session on the Wednesday I was honestly ready for another rest day but Thursday the plan said 8k easy so I did get out and do that I definitely took it very easy and on the flattest route I can find nearby which I think gave me only with a 60 or 80 meters of elevation which is kind of good for the local routes so uh, try to do a real recovery pace for that one as I think I needed it so I'm just walking still on Frithall Lane should be called Never Ending Lane so let's go on to the next day of training last night Friday that was 5k steady with strength training to follow so I've got a nice little road route that I can use when I don't want to worry about putting my head torch on to go on the trails it's all lit up so I did that at a decent pace and got in my garage gym and did some strength training afterwards um, I alternate between two workouts and that one included squats and calves so as well as Romanian deadlifts so my legs my legs know <laughs> they've done a workout last night uh, but they're coping so far with the long run so on to today's run 17 kilometers on the plan obviously I'm using the opportunity to re-recce part of the course that I may have forgotten but most of it's uh, as I remember it but the good thing I think about a 17k run for example is if I'm training for a just over 50k race then 17 is a third of it done <laughs> so I'm doing a, roughly a third of the race distance today which is nice if I get through that easy enough and I'll just have to repeat that a couple of times on race day easier said than done but yeah it's nice to kind of reach that landmark if you like and hoping that I won't feel too broken by the end of this I'll feel like I could continue from there 
almost 7k into the run now. My route says there's 10.4 left to go. Feeling good. The Speed Goat 5s are feeling good. And tomorrow, the Sunday run, I've got to do a 10k. Again, that'll be steady or easy if needed. And that will bring the hard part of the Hills and Strength section to an end. And week eight is a deload week, which begins with a rest day on Monday. So that's something to look forward to. Yeah, if you follow me on Strava, you'll be able to see exactly where I've been this morning. It's uh, 11th of February, Saturday. Look for the 17k run, assuming I don't get lost on the way back. Should be a link in the description and on my channel homepage. What are you two doing in this field, eh? You managed to squeeze through that little gap. You must have breathed in a lot. You know your way back. Professionals. Leave it with you guys, my ladies. Okay, well, it's time for me to turn around. I'm eight and a half K into the route. Probably ran a bit further than that with some back and forth recording I was doing. But yeah, it's been a good run so far. I'll head back to Holy Moorside now on the same route. That should be at least 17 kilometers done. Uh, 10K tomorrow, and then on to the deload week, which I'm definitely ready for. But other than a little bit of tiredness in the legs, feeling good and uh, ready for the next section. Catch you next time, guys.